Bruno Mars's real name is Peter Jean Hernandez, and now you know why he goes by Bruno Mars. The Super Bowl halftime show wasn't always this huge, bloated, overhyped production. In the 1970s and 80s, it was usually just a marching band. Why? Because people only had like four channels. What were they going to do? But over the last two decades, TV audiences have gotten bigger and bigger, and alternative programming has gotten more competitive. And so now it's become this whole thing to create a 12-minute concert that's so flashy it keeps the attention of 100 million people. And so this year we get Bruno Mars plus Red Hot Chili Peppers? Ah, this is what happens when you try to put together an act that pleases everyone and offends no one. A handsome lady who makes pop music your mom likes, and an aging rock band that would have been a better choice 20 years ago. But hey, maybe Flea will play in his underwear in 30 degree weather. Best Super Bowl halftime shows of all time. Number one is a tie, Prince and Beyonce. Don't make me choose just one. Prince and Beyonce are just different avatars of the same sex god, and they are equally perfect. Number three, because there's a tie at one, Bruce Springsteen, one of the greatest live performers of all time. Come on, if anyone deserves to play the halftime show in New Jersey, it's the boss. Number four, U2 in 2002. They played Where the Streets Have No Name while the names of 9-11 victims scrolled down a giant screen behind them. I'm not made of stone. Number five, Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake. Listen, I appreciate the little slice of nudity, but I've deducted points for Jessica Simpson, Nelly, P. Diddy, and Kid Rock all being involved. Pick one act and stay with it. Disqualified for being old, The Who, The Rolling Stones, and Paul McCartney. Springsteen only gets a pass because he crotch slammed the camera. You're welcome, ladies.